Today I'm going to take you through part two of my favorite histamine intolerance and mast cell stabilizing supplements. Now last week I talked about one of my favorites which is Twin Lab Vitamin C with Quercetin right here. Um, you can find links to this and other um, items that I talk about on my website. Um, so basically I said that some people might not do too well with quercetin or might not want to take it or it might not be right for some people and a couple of people asked about that. Basically if you've had genetic testing done, uh, I've had mine done through 23andMe, I'm going to try and put this as easily as pos as, um, as simply as possible because some people have had their genetic testing and either don't have anybody to interpret it for them yet or are just kind of looking at it and going, oh, whoa, what does all of this mean? And I can totally relate to that because that's exactly what I did and I'm still working my way through it. But anyway, um, so if you take a look at your results and manage to export your raw data and put it through something called LiveWello, it will show you a bunch of different letters with, um, with, uh, with different symbols next to them. What you're looking for is C-O-M-T. You'll find a couple of them. If you have a plus dash plus next to your C-O-M-Ts, you are a person who may not respond very well to quercetin. So basically, if you take the quercetin and you become more irritable, or I'm not saying you're irritable, but I can be, um, you can become irritable, you might not be able to sleep so well, it could give you a headache. Now, me personally, my COMTs are uh, minus dash, sorry, minus dash plus, which means that I have the genetic defect on one side but not the other. So I have personally decided that I'm going to try taking the quercetin and it's it's done me really great. So anyway, so that's, that's why some people might not want to take quercetin, but I do. Um, the other supplement that I am very excited about at the moment is vitamin K2. Now the reason for this is that people with mast cell issues and potentially histamine intolerance have uh, tend to have calcium issues leading to early osteoporosis or osteopenia. Most brands use uh, MK7, which is made from Anato, which is soy-based. And But I rang uh, Carlson and asked them and they said it is soy-free. They're K2, which is mena treterenononon. Uh, Anyway, you'll find a link to it on my website. And the reason I'm taking it is because I want to build big bones because I don't want to be, you know, those ladies that are kind of like, sorry, I, I don't know if you can see this, but you, know, you find them walking on the street, they're all hunched over. That's osteoporosis. That's a, that's a lack of bone density and I don't want that. So I'm going to be taking my vitamin K2. Um, something I forgot to mention last time is nigella sativa oil. Now on its own, nigella sativa is an H1 and an H2 receptor antagonist. That means it has properties similar to, for example, Claritin, which is an H1 blocker, or Zantac, which is an H2 blocker. So it's kind of a twofer. Um, not just that, but uh, having spoken with Dr. Theoharidis, who developed Neuroprotec, um, a couple of times. One of the things that was said was that uh, it's necessary to dilute quercetin in oil in order to increase the absorption into the body. In fact, it increases the absorption considerably and I personally did not have success with quercetin until I actually diluted it in oil. So there's spirulina is a mast cell stabilizer. I, it's also an antihistamine. I put it in um, my smoothies. I put it in my juices. But the thing is, I can't have it a lot. As with other things that enhance the immune system, oh, I, I don't do too well with it taking it every single day, and I certainly don't do very well with it on its own. Chlorella is also a, I like my pucka herbs. I don't think this is available in the States. But basically what I do is I open it up, and I don't know, these, these, they're, they're just kind of cute, aren't they? They're little green pills. I put them in a pestle and mortar and I smush them up and I put those in my smoothies and my juices too. And I can definitely tell a difference when I take chlorella. I actually seem to tolerate it better than spirulina, but again, I have my days. And that's the thing, you never know how you're going to react from day to day. That's because of many things. One, the act of digestion itself causes histamine release, which many people don't know. I wrote an article about this. You can find it on my blog or in the low histamine 101 
lifestyle guide. Um, so that's one factor. Number two, if you take something too regularly, the body begins to develop defenses against it. Because basically, if you, I don't get sick. I, I really just don't ever get sick. That's because my immune system is really strong. The problem is it's so strong that it attacks everything. As it was explained to me, your body is just so hyper, hyper protective that, you know, whereas normally if something comes into the bloodstream or into the body, you know, you might just have a little bit of a response, you know, like the body sort of looks around, what's going on? What's this new thing that's here? But in your body, you know, it's like Arnold Schwarzenegger pulls out the bazooka, it's like, bah! Bah, bah. So there you have it. That's our immune system, um, or at least my immune system. And that's why um, it's sometimes challenging to reintroduce foods. Um, but here's a little tip for you. This is, I'll cover this in greater detail in my low histamine lifestyle webinar, uh, my free webinar that's coming up. So please sign up to my mailing list to make sure you don't miss that. Um, and I'll be talking through that a little bit. Um, the, the way that I have to reintroduce things is that I will up my question and then I will reintroduce this food, the supplement, the whatever, and then I will stay at a higher dose of question until I feel I've stabilized. Once I've stabilized, I start bringing back the question again. And, um, and that's, that's my little trick. It sometimes takes a couple of weeks, you know, and the other thing is don't do it every day. You don't want to do anything every day. Well, except for breathing and eating, but you don't want to eat the same thing every day. Rotate, rotate, rotate. I do that with my beauty products. I do that with my supplements. I do that with everything. And it's probably my number one tip. And uh, that's it. A really quick little video follow-up. And I hope you enjoyed it. And stay tuned for more.